Footy finals time, the spring racing carnivals just around the corner. The Aussie Open tennis looms, as do the Ashes in cricket. It's going to be a huge few months in sport, and there'll be some magical moments and highlights. Did you know that 100 years ago, sports commentary began? Can you believe that? We take it for granted nowadays, don't we? Watching sports on the TV without commentary is just plain weird. Well, to mark the occasion, sports fanatic, he's a purist, this bloke, Michael Schiavello, has written a book called The Commentators. It's the ultimate guide to 100 years of magic moments. And Michael Chevello joins me on the line this afternoon. G'day, Michael. G'day, Jim. Great to be on with you, mate. Thank C- you. Congrats on the book. I-, I share a similar passion for sport as you, and it's- this is a great read. Let me ask you a question. Where did sports commentary actually begin a century ago? Well, on April 11, 1921, KDKA Radio, which held the first of the commercial radio licence, did a live sports broadcast of a featherweight boxing match between Johnny Ray and Johnny Dundee. And a bloke called Florent Gibson, who was a sports reporter for the Pittsburgh Post, called the match using a telephone ringside as his <laughs> microphone. And that was the first ever live sports wow. commentary. Gee, what a gr- amazing. I mean, tell me about your favourite sports commentator around the world. I mean, it's, a good, it's always a good pub debate, this one. I've got my own favourites. Who are your, who's your number one caller anywhere in the world over the 100 years? Mate, it's such a tough question, but I've got to say uh, Vin Scully, the voice of the Dodgers in Major League Baseball for 67 years. Vin Scully was named the number one commentator of all time by the American Sportscasters Association. And in 1965, Jim, he commentated Sandy Koufax's perfect game. It's eight minutes and 45 seconds long, an entire innings, 1,064 words, and it's the closest I've ever heard to commentary perfection. It is flawless. Wow, great memories. Now, closer to home, you've written in the book about some of our legendary commentators, including the one and only Richie Benno, who's right, certainly right up on my list. Now, he's from the broadcasting school, Rich, of where less is best. Let's just have a, a listen to some classic Richie Benno. And that bit of timber with the bazooka in it, it's just an innocent little kookaburra on it. Drake Tibble's got it. That is the record. Wicket-taking test match record. All Guinness Lily to give Lily 310 wickets in test match cricket. I love it. I reckon along with Alan McGilvray, Michael, I reckon Richie is the doyen of cricket commentators. Oh, no doubt about it, Jim. It it wasn't so much what Richie said, rather what he didn't say. I mean, Richie knew when to talk and when to not to. And when he spoke, he had this terrific authority. I think Richie's 1993 call of Shane Warne's ball of the century against Gadding at Old Trafford was was just superb. (laughs) How about the, this moment of commentary magic, the accurate one that he was known as, Bill Collins, and his famous race call of Bone Crusher, winning the Wait for Age classic, the Cox Plate. Let's have a listen. Bone Crusher responds to the whip, the roars of the crowd. He races up to our Waverley star. 100 out, Bone Crusher, our Waverley star. Stride for stride, nothing in it. Our Waverley star, the round, Bone Crusher, the outside. And Bone Crusher races into equine immortality. I never get sick of that, Michael. Mate, equine immortality. (laughs) What great words from Bill Collins. Bill was 57 years old at the time. And this is the call that led Bruce McEvaney to say that Collins was the best Australian commentator he'd heard in any sport. Yeah. Well, talking about Bruce, I loved his call of Cathy Freeman with Raylene Boyle in 2000 when I was hosting the games on seven. But how about Norman May as well? Across so many sports, including the Olympics, who'll... Ever forget Norman May in Moscow at the Olympics in 1980? 15 metres from a gold medal for Australia. 15 metres. 10 metres now. Brooks in front. It could be Australia's goal. 5 metres. 4, 3, 2, 1. Goal. Goal to Australia. Goal. <laughs> Brilliant. Mate, one of the greatest calls of all times. Nugget May called that race at a rate of 257 words a minute. And you know what, Jim? That call is now part of the National Archives as a wholly Australian sound, along with the didgeridoo and a kookaburra's cry. How good is that? Oh, it's, it's so much part of our, our country's fabric and uh, a big part of folklore in this country, not just in sport, a, a famous, famous call from, from Nugget in 1980. Now, you've written in your book also about some of the larger-than-life commentators, including Big D, the very excitable Darrell Eastlake, who is just absolutely fantastic in weightlifting, but also, of course, in rugby league. This is what I'm talking about. Tell 
tell you what, he was larger than life. He was loud. And didn't he get into it? Mate, I, I met Daryl when we were both commentating the 2006 uh, Commonwealth Games. His state of origin calls with Ian Maurice and Jack Gibson were legendary. His call of Wally Lewis's hit on Daryl Williams back in, I think it was 89, was great. And I really think that Peter Fitzsimons summed it up best when he once wrote about Daryl Eastlake that Daryl looked like Australia and sounded like Australia. <laughs> he was just all passion and entertainment and, like you said, just a huge character. Huge. Good on you, Michael. It's a terrific read and, uh, and well done again on the book and for well, giving us a bit of fun on this Friday afternoon and that, some of the great moments in sports commentary and some of our best commentators that have gone around. Good on you, mate. Cheers, Jim. Thank you. That is the author of The Commentators, Sports Nut Michael Chavello, and the book is published by Wilkinson.